I have a few announcements. First, on the 23rd last week, the steering committee of the Huisan Cultural Foundation and heads of each organization, around 22 people visited the Army Non-Commissioned Officer Academy. And the purpose of this visit was to visit after a long time and also to for a donation ceremony for an event called Muscle Mania that is to be held in October this year. First, let's take a look at the picture. They welcomed us with the band. That's the fitness center. And we gave our donations. Around February 2010, Reverend Abraham Park personally donated a large amount of development funds to the Army Non-Commissioned Officer Academy. And they used this fund to create the Huisan Fitness Center. And it is said that about 300 non-commissioned officer cadets use it every day and is a very useful place. At the Army Non-Commissioned Officers Academy, commemorative materials about the life of our founding pastor, the History of Redemption series, and modern and contemporary history of Korea are displayed on the walls of the entrance and the passageway of the fitness center in honor of the will of our founding pastor, who is not only a disabled veteran of the Korean War, but also practices love for our country. And they naturally come upon this kind of material, and I would say it is having a very positive impact. Right now, we gather the soldiers, but from for in the future, it is said that the non-commissioned officers will become the mainstream. And the school that raises these officers and this fitness center that they can use is very important. And one thing that I would like to ask the saints to pray for is that since this was built in 2010, the facilities and the equipment are prone to frequent breakdowns. And so we are in a situation where the church needs to provide additional support. So if you are interested in this, we would appreciate it if you could join us in donating. And second, the results of the provisional session held last week, one of the two agenda items is about the disciplinary process currently in progress. And the, it is necessary for the congregation to know this. The title of the agenda of the provisional session last week was the approval of disciplinary action against violators of the ban on participation in assemblies and gatherings of those expelled from the General Assembly. The title is very long, but currently the protests in the breakaway side are taking place four times a week in front of the main gate of the church, and they have been excommunicated from the General Assembly, and they have been dismissed from the church. And the media has reported this, and it's a serious enough problem that even nearby residents have recently experienced their discomfort. So it is an illegal gathering. And in relation to this, on January 4th, in relation to this, on the 4th, the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church of Korea made 
to pro make the decision to prohibit participation in meetings and gatherings of those who are expelled from the General Assembly. And the church sent advisory text messages to participants and collected evidence. And as a result, the result of the session, 355 people reprimanded, including addresses, 82 people suspended, including elders and ordained deacons. So a total of 437 people and the disp disciplinary measures were approved during the last session. So it's reprimanding and suspending. And in the dictionary, reprimanding means a light punishment that scolds a person for a mistake and cautions him or her not to do it again. And it's the lowest of the disciplinary actions. But even after receiving a reprimand, if they are found to have participated even once, the disciplinary period will be extended by one month. And if they are caught additionally after the second extension, they will be excommunicated. So it is by no means a light disciplinary action. The results of these disciplinary actions were notified individually by mail to the relevant people. And we hope that those who fall into this category will follow the church's guidance to avoid any disadvantages in the future. And apart from the disciplinary procedures, there are procedures for returning to the church from the breakaway side, and these are also in progress. Currently, the church respects the court's decision and opens its doors to those who express their intention to repent and follow the church's teachings. And we've said this many times. Saints are allowed to enter the church if they fill out a membership pledge after meeting with the ministers in charge. But elders and other church officials or those who have been active in the breakaway side activities can enter after verifying their sincerity through meetings with the judicial committee members after meeting with the ministers in charge. And then it is decided whether or not they can enter. Currently, we have received reports that several members of the session have completed interviews with the Legislative and Judiciary Committee from, and that there are members who wish to meet with the Legislative and Judiciary Committee. And today, I would like to talk about the church members who will be able to enter the church starting May. And I will not be naming every person in the session in the future, but I am announcing this because the person who is entering also wanted this to be announced. Elder Kim Dong-un, who is currently a member of the 24th District, said that after he felt there were problems with Lee seung -yeon's sermons, he, dis he discontinued and did not listen to his sermons and personally listened to senior pastor or our founding pastor's sermons. And he said that he felt the seriousness of the situation where children had to go to another church due to the faith of their parents. And that is why he decided to return to church. But his wife is has a different view, so they will be acting separately. The legislative committee judged that Elder Kim Dong-un was sincere, and taking into consideration various circumstances, they made the final decision to allow him to enter the church starting next week in May. The saints may have their own opinions about the situation and this decision of the church, but we ask that you trust in the church restoration process, which is carried out in an accurate manner, and follow the decision of the church. No matter who is allowed to enter the church, we ask that you extend your warm welcome to them with the love of the Lord. And next, the events in May. May is the month of the family and is the month with the most church events in the year. 
And when our saints actively participate in these events, I believe that it will be an opportunity to experience the grace of family restoration and church restoration. The important events in May are as follows. This Saturday, we have the Children's Flower Festival, and May 5th is Children's Sunday, and May 12th is the Parents' Sunday, where we give carnations. May 17th is the Pyongang Day celebration event, where pastors from our local churches will be attending. And May 18th is the 10th History of Redemption Seminar. And May 19th is the Pyongang Day Thanksgiving service. May 26th, this will be announced later once again. But considering the church's situation, it's the full mobilization, meaning that people who are giving service online or people who are hesitant to come to church because they are still a part of the breakaway side, it's a full mobilization of those people, and it will be an event as such. And in particular, this Saturday's Children's Flower Festival is being prepared as an event that not only children but also parents can enjoy. And there are many things that are being prepared, many things to eat, activities. And we also advertised regarding food last time. And thanks to your cooperation, many people have volunteered. Third district, churros, pineapple, and beaded ice cream. Fourth district, cold pop or popcorn chicken and coke. Sixth district, pizza bread. 23rd district, hot bar. Third and fourth grade ministry, hot dog, high school ministry, slushy, Bethlehem, kimbap, tteokbokki, fish cakes, and lemonade, Elim Talmud, iced coffee, plum juice, Saints Yuchungun, Yusuha, Chimps Burger, and Nacho Chips, 18th District, Park Hejong, and Gutogi, Kim Donghyun, 400 pepperos. And we are accepting more. And we would like to thank the saints who have donated this and the neighbors around the church around us are having a difficult time but even though they don't come to church they can bring their children to enjoy this event so if you are preparing this please invite them so that this flower children's flower festival will be a festival that glorifies God Thank you for all the districts and individual saints for your cooperation. And we ask for your prayers and participation in the Children's Flower Festival. And lastly, it was announced previously, but the Joseph Missions is, has their 30th anniversary. And biblically, and it is the age of becoming an adult in redemptive history. And in celebration of its 30th anniversary, the Joseph Mission raised, had a 30 challenge event for 30 days. And they had bazaars and personal donations and 50,001 donations after reading through one History of Redemption series book, and they raised a 4.32 million won um, offering. And they made this donation. And this Joseph Missions is a very important department in our church. And may it be revived so that many children and many parents will become leaders of our church. And please pray for the greater revival of Joseph Missions. Thank you.